So something I hadn't realized right off the bat is that when I hit the potholes, I had hit one of them and it bent my wheel. Um, so that sucks. Yep, pretty messed up. So um, I bent my wheel. Hit a pothole. I haven't even checked the uh, barrel yet on the inside to see if I bent that, but I know I obviously bent the lip. Um, I already played around with this thing I just picked up at Harbor Freight. It's this like uh, Porto Power portable hydraulic thing. I don't know if it's technically a Porto Power. I think those are like small little things, but you can attach it to this. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm going to try to use this to bend out the wheel. Now I already messed around with it a little bit and I did get it a little bit out, but if I try jacking it up from the floor, it just lifts up the whole car. Um, so I tried using that rubber ball there um, on the lip down there to push up. Um, now I also got that box right there, which is from Harbor Freight. It's a, a tire mounter. So the only reason I want that, I don't want to mount any tires with it. I just want something that I could put the wheel on to kind of keep it stable and that I can jack against that and push on the lip. Um, also, I got to take the wheel off, put it on there, and then I'll be able to inspect the inside. So that's what I'm doing now. Now, I cracked the carbon fiber, which really sucks. Um, and I don't know if I feel like repairing that or redoing it. And I feel like if I'm going to take it off of this wheel, I've never taken it off before. I don't know how much of a bitch it's going to be. Maybe if I just use some heat from a heat gun, it might come right out. Uh, but if it is difficult, then I'll probably just redo it, which is also difficult. Um, if it's not difficult, I might take it off all the wheels and just go back to polished lips because I must say I kind of like that look better. And obviously, if you if you bend a lip, you could fix it. If you crack a lip, you could fix it. And you could polish them. But when you mess up carbon fiber lips, it's just such a pain. There's, you know, so many extra steps to repair in that. So they look cool and all. But uh, they're not easy to take care of. Especially when I'm taking this thing basically off-roading and going to campsites. And going places that cars really shouldn't go at all. And... Uh, on the other side, I curbed a wheel on a tree stump once trying to fit through this little path to get somewhere. Um, so, yeah. If you guys want to see a DIY on how I made these lips, you can click right here in the corner of the screen to see. However, I wouldn't recommend it if you actually drive your car because they don't hold up to the elements. And what happens is after a while, if you do curb them, you have to redo the whole wheel. Uh, you can't just polish it out like you can with polished aluminum. So, um, yes, I did bend the barrel slightly, a little bit. That one should be really easy to take out. I shouldn't even need heat for that. Um, you're supposed to use heat when you do this uh, to make the aluminum more malleable. You don't want to use too much heat. What happens when you use heat on the polished part is it discolors it, and then you have to repolish it, which I'm probably going to have to repolish on all, all of them anyway when I take off the carbon, if that's what I do. But, yeah, unfortunately, I did bend it here, too. All right, so I got this thing set up here, and... Uh, this is right here and the carbon's already all damaged so i don't really care and i'm probably i probably am eventually going to take all this off i don't know if i'll do it right away but i at least want to be able to drive my car now it's a nice day well it's sort of nice and uh it's almost spring so i am going to attempt to do this without heat i already did it quite a bit it was actually bent a lot worse Eventually I'll get it here. I'm just gonna have to, it's kind of rigged up weird. This isn't meant for this. So I'll jump into the actual wheel repair in another video later on. I just wanted to show it now because I had forgot to include it in the last video uh, when all the damage actually happened from the potholes in New Jersey. So the rest of this video is gonna be me jumping right into fixing the damage on the actual car and reinforcing the back of it so that this doesn't happen again. No, the front fell off. All right, so I got it about 70% uh, pushed back in, and now what I'm going to do is drill out the spot welds and the ones that were broken and re-weld them. So there they are drilled out. I need to uh, make sure I get all the paint out so it's not corroded. Um, I may try to burn it off first and then clean it with a wire brush, and uh, then I'll just do a few little tacks in there and then grind those down so that they look like that one. So if you guys ever decide to tow a trailer with your NSX and you end up bending 
these things you gotta buy new ones here's the part number for the uh driver's side the last number five there the seven five one two five the other side is seven five seven one five two zero i believe mosquito um yeah oops, had to kill a mosquito uh anyway so i got this it's still mangled looking obviously and i'm gonna bang it out a little bit but it's really just cosmetic purposes right now and i actually have to fix that hole but the rest of this stuff it mounts in so that means i could put my bumper on and i can drive this like a car once i seam sew everything and put it all back together um so i bent the other one too and i have that one in the package over there and that's gonna go right there um i still have to spot weld all of these guys yeah, that one's broken now anyway i gotta spot weld all these things still all around and seam seal um i've decided to leave this mangled one because i am going to be cutting slits in it somewhere i believe in order to get to the frame rails which are back here so that i could run metal all the way back to the tow hook and back to this so that this never happens again and if it does and i get hung up and it stops the car well, i'll just total the car and there's the passenger side one Got the tail lights in. This is still all mangled here, but the bumper should fit back on. At least I could drive it around until I figure out what I'm going to do about uh, reinforcing the hitch back here on the frame. All right, all uh, spot welded and painted up like it never happened. Like it never happened, almost. Except for all those uh, little crinklies right there, but you'll never see that. Don't tell anybody. So I was able to butt up the rear pan so that you couldn't see uh, any daylight anymore, anywhere. So it was all touching, but I wanted to waterproof it anyway. So I re-seam sealed it and uh, just took a brush and lightly went over it. And yeah, then I'll paint over that red and it'll look just like factory. All right, so I got the seam sealer in, got it all painted and I'm slowly making sense of this wiring harness i got the tail lights all hooked up uh, i got all the wires tucked through for the trailer hitch and uh, now it's time for me to neaten up this air suspension and tuck all that back in and now i have my uh floor set back in just to make a little bit of adjustments and then i have to hook up the bumper and i'll be able to put the uh, carpet back right here that's it that's my air suspension set up in case any of you guys are wondering 3h in the middle a couple of D-rings for uh, strapping down luggage, backpacks, whatnot, and uh, dual compressor setup by Air 440s. I used to have a much prettier trunk setup with a nice big tank back here, all polished aluminum and nice mounts for everything, but it took up so much room. So what I did was I ran lines to the front and I put the tank up there. Makes it much more usable now. Much more practical because I could fit three or four backpacks back here. All right, uh, bumpers back on, taillights are wired up, wired up, air suspension's in. Um, everything's as it should be. The trunk isn't closed right now, so that's the weird gap. I can just fix that by closing it. But, so what I have to do is cinch up that gap right there, but I'm actually gonna take these uh, side spats off and re-put them on again because I never liked how that fit plus the paint was messed up. Paint's messed up on the bumper so I'll have to take care of all that stuff later and this side spat is basically just hanging on by a little bit of glue and that's never really fit properly either so I'm gonna actually hit these with some heat guns and uh, get it to kind of bend back to how it should go but all the body lines and gaps are good in fact the uh, tail lights I got them to actually have better body lines than they had before um i took the quarter panels and was able to kind of adjust them a little bit so there wasn't as much of a gap down here there used to be so at this point i was on to trying to figure out how to make sure that this never happens again so i was playing around with fabricating some different brackets that would bolt onto the frame my friend let me use his shop with his two post lift it's a lot easier to work on than with my four post these that i was making actually didn't end up working out uh they were strong and they they'll stop the trailer from ever ripping off again 
but when I finished putting them on and I stepped on the tongue, it would flex a lot. Uh, so while it would keep anything from pulling back, it didn't do anything for tongue weight. So I ended up going back to the drawing board and starting over again later on with an entirely new design. Big shout out to Jeremy Cutler for making these for me. Um, he traced out a uh, tow hook that he got from Japan for the NSX. Uh, this will replace the factory tow strapping points and uh, that's the rest of it there. So he traced it out for me and shipped it to me. Uh, and I'm gonna cut it out of this half inch piece of aluminum. Uh, I don't know how I'm gonna cut it, whether probably a jigsaw or I do know somebody with a water jet if I want to get really fancy. So I'm just laying it out. I'm going to make some modifications to kind of beef it up on here the best I can. And uh, it's I'm, I'm not happy with what I put on before. It, it'll work from, it'll stop the trailer from pulling off again. However, it doesn't do anything for the tongue weight. This should help with the tongue weight. So now at this point, I uh, went to another shop and started to finish the second part, the version two of these brackets which I'd gone back to the drawing board for. And these should be a lot stronger because they'll actually bolt right to where the factory bolts are for the tow hook. The shop was really useful here because they had a bandsaw and drill presses and everything else. So I made a lot of progress here. But in the meantime, they had this slingshot here. So I took Cassius for a ride in it. We had some fun. I like this mini truck. I put my roof box on it. Cassius, come here. Cassius, up. Spicy spaghetti. I'll have this square tubing and that like that in there. And then through bolts going through, grabbing our new bracket under here. Nice. <laughs> that a good one. Now that I finally organized a little bit in my garage, it gives me an opportunity to actually work out here so now I could finish fabricating those brackets that I started. Building my car, more importantly driving around with my dog, it's therapeutic to me. And I'm not an artist, I can't paint pictures or sculpt sculptures, but what I can do is build my car. It's kind of an extension of me. I don't consider myself a car guy. I don't get emotionally attached to cars, really. They're just hunks of metal at the end of the day. But for me, making it my own is part of the fun, and it's very therapeutic. So when I had the NSX trailer get hung up and basically cause a massive amount of damage really quickly, and immediately after, followed by some tragic events that I talked about in my last video, it kind of steered me away from even coming out to my garage and editing these videos, so I put it off because doing so was almost like reliving the experience, and I just didn't have it in me. And right after those deaths, my grandfather passed away a week later, I'd already gone to two funerals, and then I had to go to another one. And then Cassius, who uh, I love dearly, he's a sweet dog. Even though he's getting older and 14, I'm not ready to lose him yet. And he had had a stroke and had vestibular disease. So all that stuff just kind of messed up this whole experience for me. But as time went on and Cassius made a miraculous recovery, it finally came to me that I was happier working on my car, driving around with him, and making YouTube videos. So anyway, that's why it took me a long time to release these videos. And that's why you guys are getting caught up to speed now. So I'll stop talking about it. Nobody wants to hear about my crap. Everybody has their own crap that they're going through. But I just figured to the people that were loyal enough to stay subscribed and keep up to date with my content, thank you. I love you guys. And uh, I really appreciate your support. And 
I'm trying to pick up where I left off here and get back to doing what I actually love, which is building my cars and going on road trips with caches. So continuing fabricating here, these are the brackets. Those are what's going to the crash bar. Right here, I added brackets on the crash bar that those will bolt to, and that should fix everything. And it really worked. It basically bulletproofed this thing. You could stand on the tongue, jump up and down, and there's hardly any flex at all. This project made me a lot more confident in my welding, too, because I had to do a lot of it. They're still not perfect, but they work. So new friends came down with their NSX and the FTO, and they brought me a Japanese banana Twinkie. Very excited. Tokyo banana. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. I appreciate you tuning in. I appreciate the support. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below, and stay tuned for more videos coming shortly. I try to release one every week. Thanks.